much like how mosquitoes suck blood from people unknowingly. Politicians suck money from hard-working taxpayers just the same. Sometimes a politician's generous salary isn't quite enough for them. So they need to make a little extra money on the side and thus resort to illegal activities, mostly at the expense of the average, everyday taxpaying citizen. Being in the public eye and trusted with the amount of power they hold, one would assume no politician would be so foolish to participate in ridiculously illegal and fraudulent schemes. But that's where you're wrong. Today, we're going to talk about Wes Cooley, a former Oregon congressman in the mid-90s, the mosquito and star of this video. Born on March 28, 1932, in Los Angeles, California, Wester Shadrick Cooley is a Republican politician and rancher from Oregon. He was a child of divorced parents, and only his aunt took care of him, who sent him to military school at the age of nine. Cooley attended Lausinger High School, a public high school in Lawndale, California. As you may have guessed, Cooley was a chronic liar. We wouldn't be talking about him if he wasn't, would we? Cooley goes as far as lying about his high school records, stating that he was an honor student and an athlete during his high school years. However, records from Lausinger High School reveal that while Cooley had good grades, he wasn't an honor student. Similarly, no records or pictures of Cooley existed that back up his claim that he was an athlete for his school. These are the shallowest of lies Cooley has told, but it goes to show that if he can lie about such shallow details, what other deceptions has he told the public about the more critical parts of his life? After some time, Cooley went to an undisclosed community college in 1956 to finish an Associate of Arts degree. Later on, he graduated from the University of Southern California in 1958 with a Bachelor of Science degree. In his lull period between graduating high school and entering college from 1952 to 1954, Cooley said that he entered and served in the military, or at least, that is what he made the people believe. In 1992, Wes Cooley was elected to the Oregon State Senate, and in 1994, he was elected to the United States House of Representatives as a Republican from the Second District. As a member of the Republican Party's proclaimed contract with America, he fought for the rights of private property, American military superiority, and pushed other Republican Party principles. During his political career, Cooley managed to introduce, sponsor, and co-sponsor over 260 bills, 18 of which became law under the 104th Congress. This number is good enough for people to remember Cooley in good name, except this was overshadowed by the lies and crimes he did what he is now remembered for. Enter 1996, Mail Tribune, an Oregon-based daily newspaper, questioned Cooley's statement in the 1994 Voter's Guide that he claims to have served in the military during the Korean War. Cooley's first wife has testified that she's never seen Cooley set foot outside of the United States her whole life of knowing him. He was also accused of keeping his marriage with his second wife a secret for several years, just so she could continue to be compensated with veteran benefits from a prior marriage. Surprisingly, Cooley kept his cool during the campaign period and denied all charges made against him. However, he was put under an insane amount of pressure when even his campaign manager, Greg Walden, and House Speaker Newt Gingrich asked him to step down. In August 1996, Cooley withdrew from the race and was replaced by a former six-term incumbent Republican, Bob Smith, in the ballot. 
He won the November elections against Democrat Mike Dugan. Amidst Cooley's shameless denial of the charges against him, it was proven true that he lied about his military service in the 1994's Voter's Guide. He even went as far as to say that all his supporting documents were burnt down and destroyed in a fire. But he still had charges pressed against him because of how he lied in an official document. Ultimately, he was sentenced to probation and community service and was ordered to pay a fine. It was nothing but a slap on the wrist. As if lying and public deception wasn't already a bad thing, Cooley managed to top this off with his most abrasive fault yet. Tax fraud. After being a congressman, he was sentenced to one year in prison in 2012 because of a 10 million investment fraud scheme. He was at the age of 80 when the verdict finalized that he will be spending a year and a day in prison. All because of his lies and deception he's done over the years. On January 29, 2009, Cooley was indicted in California due to involvement in an investment scheme involving the shares of BitBay.com, a fake investment company they made in order to lure in investors. Stating it's a company soon to be acquired by eBay, Cooley and the other two unidentified men were involved in the scheme, deceiving many people into purchasing unregistered stocks for BitBay.com. A total of six counts of money laundering and one count of filing a false tax return were filed against Cooley in 2002 to conceal over $1.1 million in illicit income. After being charged with filing a false tax return and receiving $1.1 million, Cooley pleaded guilty of fraud. The court ordered him to pay restitution to investors of $3.5 million, as well as back taxes to the IRS of $138,000. $470, along with his one-year prison sentence. As brazen as Cooley's actions were, this was a repeated pattern, and unsurprisingly most other politicians, friends, and people in power just turned the other cheek. Other than his aforementioned chronic lying, Cooley has also had a history with questionable business practice as well. Other than playing a corrupt politician, Wes Cooley was also known as a rancher and had a vitamin repackaging company in Bend, Oregon. A few days after news broke out about his alleged tax fraud, more infamous news broke out that his employer Richard Jensen, who worked for Wes repackaging company, claimed that he had not been paid by Wes in eight whole years working for him. Cooley's counter-argument was that he treated him like a son and allowed him to live in his ranch for free, yet he never paid him a single dollar. Jensen claimed he was deferring a salary for future payments, and this was never written in writing. Thus, no legal matter took place. Regardless, shoddy business practices seem to have been trend with this politician who despite taking an oath to serve the tax-paying citizens, simply just took advantage of and flat-out stole money from them. It can be argued that some lies are harmless or even necessary, if they're about the small things. White lies, as they're known. But in most situations, lying is frowned upon. When you're a politician, many eyes and ears are on you, and it's downright foolish to think that you can get away with such blatant theft and fraud like Wes Cooley did. When a person gets fed up from a mosquito bite sting, they do whatever it takes to hunt the little bastard down. Likewise, when the victims get fed up from all the lying and stealing, they do whatever it takes to bring the perpetrator down. And in Wes Cooley's case, 
That meant serving one year in jail. On February 4th, 2015, Cooley died at the age of 82, bringing all the shame and guilt he gathered over the years to his grave, dying a free man outside the walls of a prison cell. What are your thoughts on Wes Cooley and his tax fraud fiasco? Was he let off too easily for the crimes he committed? If this was an eye-opening video to you, go ahead and press that like button and subscribe. Until next time, this is Eat the Rich.